Hey everybody, this is Aceto, the Forerunner Pony, better known to the OGs as FHRC Brony. And today, I'm actually doing a light conversion on this car, uh, my 95 Forerunner. Uh, what I'm actually doing is replacing my stock halogen bulbs to LEDs. Well, kind of, because I already converted the stock halogens to LEDs. So why am I making this video? Well, the reason why I brought it up is because I am suffering what's called hyperflashing. If you guys don't know what hyperflashing is, I'm not going to explain it to you in words. I'm just going to show you what hyperflashing is. Now, hyperflashing only happens when the car originally came with stock halogen bulbs stock i said with halogen bulbs the reason why it's hyper flashing that this turn signal is hyper flashing and this one is not well first of all why is it hyper flashing to begin with well leds draw less current than a halogen bulb will and halogen bulbs also generate heat whereas led bulbs generally don't and since due to its low current draw the car thinks that you have a burnt headlight tail light or turn signal in some cars some cars this one does not have it if you're gonna put LED lights on your brake lights which originally came with halogens some cars will have a warning message on the gauge cluster like a warning light saying that your brake lights is burnt out if it's on turn signals, you will suffer something called hyperflash, which I just showed you. So now the real question is, why is this one hyperflashing and this one is not? Well, I use a device called a resistor and it looks something like this. And I actually got this in in a pair. I actually, so it's, this is, it's the other ones installed where this one is at. That's why it's not flashing rapidly. You can literally get this at Napa Auto Parts or you can get one from AutoZone under the Sylvania name. Uh, yeah, Sylvania also makes uh, these as well. What this does, it's supposed to uh, stop the hyper flashing on your turn signal and or uh, turn off that burnt tail light, brake light thing message on your gauge cluster. Anyways, enough of me yapping at you. That's just a brief introduction of what is hyper flashing. Let me go ahead and show you what I did. So on my 95 Toyota 4Runner, in order for me to actually gain access to the turn signal, um, it's, it's simple enough actually. You just need to take two, two uh, screws out and then out it comes. That's easy enough actually. But the issue is, I need to do a lot of fishing to get back here. So what I did is I removed the grill and then I take my 10 millimeter socket wrench and loosen the bolts to hold the headlight in place. Okay, so I took the two screws that hold this turn signal light on. So um, now I can go ahead and remove this and there's my LED bulb, which does work just fine, but you just saw earlier that it was hyper flashing because I only just did a direct connection, which causes, causes this to hyper flash. Uh, a little, dis uh, I wouldn't say a disclaimer, but I did put load resistors on the tail lights as well because I also converted those turn signals and brake lights to, to LEDs. And I thought at first, those two resistors should work fine it will do the same thing with this side but actually i was wrong so what i'm going to do now is take it up here and that's the reason why i actually put the i removed the grill and the headlight out and i just grab scissors and just cut this uh this sleeve off just a little bit but uh, just be careful not to accidentally cut the wires. You don't want to do that. But um, I know what you guys are thinking. You, that's just stupid. Why are you doing? Why are you removing the sleeve? I'm not really removing the sleeve. I'm just trying to 
open it up a little bit because the reason why I'm actually doing that, okay, I think that's good enough. The reason why I'm gonna do that is I'm actually going to splice in the, uh, the load resistor. Now the load resistor doesn't have a, a specific current flow. There's no, like, there's no arrow that shows how the, the circuit should follow. So it's pretty much whatever you do, uh, anything goes with it. Uh, so, and how am I gonna splice this? First of all, I am not going to cut these wires actually. In fact, I'm not gonna be doing that. Good thing that the package actually came with, they're not the best quality, but they do work. And it's these guys right here. Sorry for the wind, guys. This is what they look like. These are the, um, these are basically plastic splice uh, holders. What you do is you just basically put the wires in these holes. And then this little metal piece right here is a is a not really a blade, but what it does is when you use your your crimps, uh, use your uh, uh, pliers to crimp the crimp this together. And what it does is it actually cuts the um, the wires the wire sleeve. I think that's the the term. It, it cuts the sleeve so it gets to the metal contacts and this will actually make contact with the wire and then you get a connection so i'm going to show you how i how it's done okay, so hopefully i can get a good angle here because uh, it's the best thing i can do without uh, doing any heavy camera work or anything like that and i'm just one person just fixing his own car in fact, I really love working on my 4Runner. It's like my personal girlfriend. Well, kind of. Unlike a regular girlfriend that will leave you, will break up with you eventually, your car is a girl, it's like a girlfriend or a boyfriend that won't ever leave you as long as you take care of it. So. How this is actually done is, let me actually, sometimes these, these gauges, these wire gauges are a little big, so that's why I'm actually using a flat head to actually spread it out a little bit. The plastic, plastic crimps in a little, a little bigger, so. So hopefully this will go in, which, yes, it does, yay. Okay. So that, the white wire is in here now, so that's good. So now I can go ahead and put my, like I said, there's no specific current flow that this uh, resistor can take. I mean, there's, there is showing red and black, but you know, positive and negative, it really doesn't matter. It's the, it's the same thing. Uh, there's no specific current flow uh, direction that this thing will, will take. So anyway, so for example, this black wire, it's now, in there now what i'm going to do is close this up and then hopefully we'll yeah hold up just close this up hopefully i get enough sometimes uh, this thing doesn't always work that's why i don't this is one of the reasons why i don't like one of these things i had that i had the same issue with uh similar crimps okay there we go i had similar issues with the other crimps that i did with the sylvania ones sylvania and they're not the greatest thing but they do work so now i'm gonna go grab my pliers and just crimp them together and the the metal will make will cut into the the wires and it will make connection Just like so. There we go. It's not going anywhere. Should be a good connection. And basically, what you're gonna do now is gonna be doing the same thing with the other wire.
There we go, there's, there, there's that first click. And now grab the pliers and just crimp it together. Okay, so it looks like it's in. So now it's on. All right. So what you're going to do now is just go ahead and test it. Originally this light was was hyper flashing. Let's see what happens now with the resistors on. I ain't no professional electrician. I am not very good at soldering, kind of, and I am not, I, how do I say this? I don't know a lot about electricity or anything like that. I'm just a guy who just works on mechanical stuff like cars. And uh, guess what? It's no longer hyper flashing. So that's a job well done for me right there. So now with that all done, uh, the question is, since this thing's gonna be flopping around, where the heck am I gonna put this? Um, on this Forerunner, there's actually a little hole right here on the bracket where the headlight is supposed to connect to. What I'm actually going to do is grab a... I'm actually going to grab one of these little... I would normally use zip ties, but I don't have any zip, any access to zip ties at the moment, but I'm actually gonna use one of these little uh, little metal wires uh, you would normally find these in uh, how do you call these usually you'll find these in like bags of tortilla chips uh, that you find at Mexican stores or uh, more commonly uh, the, the stuff that you get a loaf of bread uh, that's what I'm those are the things I'm talking about. if you guys know what I'm talking about I uh, yeah you know what I'm talking about. So just, just look it up in there. So it doesn't flop around when I, when I drive. So now with that all taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and put the light back onto the housing. Okay, so now I can go ahead and put the hover down. Then, go ahead and, since the, the LED, the headlight housing is actually keyed, all I need to do is just insert the light, insert the light itself. If it fit, come on, I need to find the right, there we go. And then just twist it and it's locked. And now what I'm going to do is grab the two screws that hold the light, the, uh, the turnstickle light in place. So, for those who own a 95 Forerunner or any car that requires you to remove the headlight to get to the turn signal, um, go ahead and reinstall it. On this 95 Toyota Forerunner, it uh, requires me to remove the headlight. So, to put it back on, just put the 10 millimeter bolts back into place. Yeah, they're 10 millimeter bolts. So once you're done with that, now, since the headlights are all installed, you can go ahead and put the grill back on. And pretty much the, the last thing you're gonna need to do, if you have a 95 Forerunner or a second generation Toyota Forerunner, uh, put your parking lights back on. We just held down by two screws and held down by a clip. Grab your screwdriver. Grab your 
screwdriver 